Here we are, gentlemen. Here's our salmon. What? Beautiful. So I'm just going to take the fillet off. Wow, this beats having the pre-packed stuff, doesn't it? Oh, yes. Doesn't get any fresher than this. Just going to take this fillet off. Very important to have a nice, sharp knife here. Otherwise, you're in a lot of trouble. Did you catch that salmon? I wish I had. I did. This came from Tesla. Right, so, next step, pin boning. How hard is this? Yeah. It's one of those things that chefs hate to do. Can you see those bones? You're just pulling them out. It's my ears pulling just getting fried. I can't see a thing. Well, basically what I do is actually put my hand across there, and you actually feel it. If you put your hand across, you'll have a feel it. Oh, yeah, there they, they are. Sitting up? Okay, they are yeah. sort of rising up a bit, okay. Gonna trim that belly off, which this is, I would have to say, probably the best part of the fish. Do you use that for anything? What would you use that oh, for? Oh, we can comfy that as well. I'm gonna comfy this. Sometimes yeah. I've trimmed it up before and you'll take a little bit of a section out, yeah. roll it in sushi. Mm. So it's really good like that. Oh, it's got okay. that and just go, go raw. Readiness. Yeah. Matt, do you Beautiful. have a fair, bit, it's a fair bit of salmon on the menu here? We don't always have the same fish, but we definitely use a fair bit of salmon, that's for sure. I think we're good about salmon as well. We get so much out of one one fish. You actually obviously get the, the protein, the fillet, we use the bones to make stock, which we can use the head as well. Obviously you get the row off the fish as well, which is really important. Taking the skin off. So this is the old school way, right? You get down into the tail there, and just do a wiggle. I don't do the wiggle. <laughs> Hopefully this I don't wiggle. Good. Look at that. And then we get the skin. Now you can use that as well though, can't yeah. you? Yeah. What do you That's do with that? That's the big thing, right. We're going to dry it out. It takes about three days, a little bit of salt. Maybe we just pop it down to the end there for the young man. Watch this. Oh, it's alive, it's alive. <laughs> you can drag me two pieces of chucks. That'd be great. Chucks, super white chucks. That's it. Is that Tasmanian chucks super white? I don't think can we so. grow that here? I don't think so. Salt and water, cleaned off as much as we can. We don't want flesh on there, that's the big thing. When we um, come to fry it up, it'll actually be dense and won't fry up properly. Is this how you do it? Um, you use the chucks? Yeah. No, I usually do a wire rack, so I'll get a cake rack, put it over a tray. Well, that sounds a bit more professional. You sound like you're out in the bush somewhere <laughs> and this is all we've got. Might grab some more of that smoked salt. Just don't they do that? Much. Have you seen those guys that do this? Yes. That's how is that? And then you cover it with the chucks. And then we get something that looks a little like this. Dried out for That's about it. three days. And salted. So you want to have a little feel? You don't yeah. want to go too much salt on it's the just like a skin. Actually, that'll stay in the fish. Like so when you actually cook it up, because we'll deep fry that off like a corn cracker. Let's do our portions. We're looking for about probably 100, 120. We've got our little confit oil over here. Confit, is it just like oil? So this is actually uh, Hill Farm cold pressed lemon flavoured canola oil. And that oil yellow flower farm. stuff you see. Yeah. Incredible. We're just going to throw that into the oil. Can you go and grab the um, lemon verbena for me, Matt? Where is it? What's a lemon verbena, Matt? Uh, it's a herb. Yeah. It's a it's a taste. Lemony, it very. Oh my um, goodness. It's a very hearty kind of a valued herb, herb this one. Over to the side there, John, is the smoked salt, which is another Tasmanian product. Smoked salt? Smoked salt. You want to taste like that salt one? With, the, taste. with a smoky flavour. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Why do we need to smoke salt? Well, it's, a great, it's a great way of infusing the smoke flavour into something without actually putting the smoke in. We're just going to put a little sprinkle in there. It's going to put a bit of flavour in there. Next step we're going to do is make our coconut and shimmer wasabi foam. Have you used shimmer wasabi before? Uh, yep, plenty of times. Love it. Yeah, it's good yeah. stuff. That's it there. Yes. Yeah, it's not the most attractive thing in the world, I will definitely say. But the flavour out of that is quite amazing. Simple, easy way to make it is. Bung it into our thermo. This is like a housewife tool, and you're we'll using it in the, in the professional you kitchen. Turn it on and we'll do it all for me. Yeah. You'd see these in pretty much all kitchens these days. So yeah. the whole idea is it's hot boiling water. And that Probably is about what in there? Cup. We don't need a lot of water in there, just tipped in. Can I press the button? You can. You gotta do you this. You turn the dial, I know how it works. To what? Oh, look at that clamps. Four. Just go nuts, go to 10. Let's go 10. Let's go 10. We're done. So this really is for a little bit of flavour, but to be honest, it's more about colour. Just want it to be attractive. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, wow. See? Wow. It's a little that colour that's coming out of that. It's like something you get in your breakfast fruit juice in your energy drink. The coconut cream in that bowl. So pop that in. The whole thing? Whole thing. Right, so a little bit of fish sauce. Oh, that's yummy. Oh, that coconut cream. splash, yummy. so that's just going to give us some extra flavour rather than adding salt all the time. Fish sauce? Fish How sauce? much did you use then? I used about oh, probably a teaspoon's worth. I think it's Paul probably got you to do this, Matt, because he's just not very good at it. So can you explain what is happening? Is anything coming out? Oh, it is. Yeah, so you can see it, 
what it's doing is it's as it's going round on those blades, it's grating very finely off. But then again, it doesn't smell like wasabi, does it? What's that old age thing you do, right? When you because there's a woody it. end of asparagus. Yeah. So you snap it. Generally, where it snaps is where the woody end starts, and the good stuff happens. Why do you have to snap it off? Because it's woody. It's horrible. Does it taste good? Very stringy. Yeah, have a go. No, I'm no, like, no, I'll take right. your word for no, it. No, no, no. You need to experience this. This in here. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like eating twigs. Exactly right. So I can just snap them off wherever it snaps. Is pretty much where the wood stuff starts. I had no idea. If I'd have bought asparagus like this, I would have just chucked the whole thing in a pot with boiling water. See, they don't tell you that. This should be on the packet saying, snap one, so point, one to one point five inches off the bottom. Great. You peel so, them. Yeah, so we're just, just going to peel them off. Basically, all we're going to do, we're doing a blackened asparagus. So this on the char grill, a little bit of lemon canola oil, and a little bit of that smoked salt. Mm. You don't mind grabbing that cream siphon there, Mr. John? Oh, cool. Now we're talking. Fun bit. You're going to have a little bit of fun. So we're going to make our foam here. So basically we've checked our flavours, it's all good, into our cream siphon. Oh yeah, I was hoping you'd spill some. I thought, I can't believe how you guys can just pour stuff like that yeah, and I spill know, it, I but no. So we've got our egg whites there, they can go straight into that. Straight in. Just yeah, go watch. for it. Look how the pro does it. See, you didn't spill it. Right, all right. How professional it is. One big thing about using these guys is make sure your seal's in. Stand Jesus. back, stand back. Oh, it made a noise and yeah. it got colder. That's it. So what we're doing is we're combining the egg whites, the, the, the fats, the cream, the coconut cream, and with the gases, so we hopefully should end up with something light and fluffy when it pumps out. It's a workout. You're doing it? a good job. I'm impressed. <sighs> It'll actually come out nice and fluffy. If we don't, we've got to remake it. We've got to cut. Oh, oh yeah. Look at that. So I'm a very happy man. That's worked out very well. Thank you very much. No yes, my work here is done. Well, <laughs> thank you. You guys can take over because I'm happy. So right, we're going to throw a bit of our oil in here that we're going to use for our fish skin. Basically, when that oil starts to smoke, we know we're good to go. Because yeah, because when you puff the rice, it's got to be nice and hot. Yeah. Obviously, if it sits to in there, it's a little bit um, break little the bit grain cooler. open. Yeah, it pops. Yeah. That's it. Do you use this black stuff in here. We just get a whole bunch of different varieties of rice, mm. puff them up, use them on salads. Would you like to do this, Matt? I can pour some in there if you want. Go for it. Yeah. How much, how much do you want? Why are you running away? Thin low. Beautiful. Just give it a little shake. Look at, guys. Look at the sound, listen to that. Kind of changing colour, they're getting white. We're going to do our fried fish skin, which is going to turn into like a prawn cracker, nice and fluffy okay. and crunchy. So if we grab our pre-done dried fish skin over there. Thank you very much. I know it looks appealing and it's exciting. So but that's the dried stuff that that's is it. what you do in the chuck super wide. So pretty much the same theory as we're doing with the um, wild rice. Uh, nice and hot, but not too hot that it burns it. Mm -hmm. It should be done within like three or four seconds. Got our tongs, thank you, you sir. You better do that, because it might get burnt. In she goes. Wow, it's just like chucking in a deep fryer at the fish and chip shop. That's it, in out. Now, yep. toasting our nori. That's all right. So toasting your nori. So if you've got a beautiful char grill like this one, you just put it straight on. Oh, and we're just giving it a little bit of a toasting, not too much. You don't want it to be bitter and burnt. Again, two seconds on each side. Yeah, just turning. keep it moving. Beautiful. It almost seems more delicate the crispier one. Too. Yeah. Beautiful. That's it. Ready to go. How we bring it all over? We we'll get our bowl here. So we're going to make our crust. So we've got our toasted nori, we've got our crispy uh, salmon skin, and we've also got a beautiful puff of wild rice. Wild rice. So, all into here. Just a little bit of this. Beautiful. Do you, do you know how to use this thing? You yeah, know, you just turn the knob, turn the ribs up, baby. Happy with that? Oh, How's that looking? looking? I like that. Show me. Oh, I'm happy. Looks like a spice, like you're buying a jar. Yes. Well, we're going to put that on our salmon. It's got like a burnty, popcorny flavour to it as yes. well. Yes. Right. And then that goes on the plate. So basically, we just put this here, and then our comfy salmon will dip it in. We are ready to plate up. Let's do it. So we're going to do a plate each. So if it's not great, it's not my fault. It'll be your fault. Because at this stage, I only really want some tips. We're going to do a shorter one, a larger one. Shorter one, 
It's very important to have a visual wow absolutely, factor to absolutely. your food. But because you, want... you basically see it, you smell it, then you taste it. Because when, you, when you're putting it on the table, you want them to go, wow, you know, that looks really nice. So, so we've had our salmon sitting in there for about half an hour. Yes, it's been marinating so in that. look at that, that is oil. perfect. That's a good colour. That's really perfect. That pale, pale pink. Lovely. Go. Draining off a little bit of that oil, so it's not too greasy on the plate. Where yeah, would kitchens be versatile. without the chuck I super use one. it for absolutely What's going on? everything. Don't, we know. If you just go over there, you'll see my little secret ingredients. Ah, here it is. Ah, this is, gives you a little pizzazz on the plate. Well, it comes from overseas. Yeah, look, it's got foreign Ish. language on it. España. It's oh, from Spain. Oh, España, yeah. of course. That's what we're going to do. Now, this is all presentation, really. Oh, is, is, the, is there much the, taste to squid ink? There is, taste. Yeah, I'm not going to stick it in your mouth, because that'd be weird. Thrown in. No black on my teeth, is it? Yeah, all over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it's not like that, so, is it? We're just so we're going to do a, a seven o'clock to one o'clock. I want to do my own. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Little seven splash. o'clock to one o'clock. There you go, guys. That's like a seven. That's like a. That's, that's like a thirty-two minutes past to oh, like a come three on. minutes past. Jeez. Put it down on this side. Oh, onto our yeah, crust. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Onto our plate. Cross like that. There we go. It's like when you cook fish. Yeah. You the same thing. You don't want yeah. to move your fish around too much when you're cooking in the fry pan. So you put the presentation side down, down first. first. Flip it over, finish it off, and then you're actually putting it out onto the plate. Uh, and, yeah. <laughs> but yes, you don't do that. <laughs> we don't blow on the plate. Asparagus. Yep. Stand one up here. Are you just making this up as you yeah, go Yeah, pretty along? much. It's a solid big one. Mm. Never heard that one before. Shush. So I don't think that's going to stay. Mm, just right. saying. So there you Look go. Look at that. Waste not, what not. Look at that. Lovely. Is that good? That's good. Is it right? Okay, just going to drain it off a little bit. We don't want all that water onto the plate. So we're just going to put a little, oh. little, see, look at that. It's sexy. You're like a little dog. We've got our nigella seeds, just on the other side. Okay. This is my problem. I tend, to, I tend to go a bit excessively on things. So you guys can just put a little bit up there as well. It's a nest. Go. It's all about the nest. I've been watching you guys. Here. So you can see we're getting, to, we're getting it together now. The dish is actually coming to life. It is. It's all about components and placement. Is this something you'd, you'd serve up here at charcoal? You reckon? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like it's got, it's got lovely, you know, flavours going on there. You got nice sort of fatty confit salmon. Ooh. And look at the colour that this lemon's adding. So now we can get to our phone. So rather than just do this onto the plate, this has got quite a bit of uh, gas yeah, and power behind it. Yes. We do it into a bowl separately. And now onto the plate. Yes, that's uh, right. So lemon canola oil. We're almost the done, lemon guys. infused we're canola almost, oil. We're almost done. It's what you drizzle on the top and make it look fancy. I'm going to do a little bit of a oh, circle. Oh, look at that. I think we're this. good to go. Right, get out. Get out. Oh, out, oh, to, out of the restaurant. Okay. Watch me do this. Get out. Trust me, oh, it's fine. There's one more thing. One more? What have you forgotten? Oh. Now I'm a happy man. Look at this. This is how the professionals do it. Oh, thank you. Can you serve from the left, do you? Absolutely. No idea. I'm going to work his work now. I'm serving from the right to you. Nice work. Looks delicious. Yeah, look all right. Fantastic. Does it matter which way the swirl goes? Yeah, it'll work. What do you think, Matt? Is this something you'd serve here at Charcoal? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Does it? It's high quality. It's standard. Oh, how cool. Shall we? That sounds like a great idea. Well, cheers, yeah. gentlemen. Cheers, cheers. Cheers to a job well Thanks, done. Thanks, Matt. Well done. Thanks for having us, Matt. Mm. What nice. is this? A Riesling? Frogmore Frog Creek, Creek 2017. Is mm, Riesling delicious. your standard salmon go-to, is it? Ah, uh, crisp and white, pretty much. Yeah, because yeah, you've got the fat of the salmon, you need something that's crisp and, and fresh. White. And white. Crisp and white. You could actually have a Pinot if you wanted Riesling's to Riesling's well. coming back, I hear. Is there anything it's wrong with me, though, if I, if I was a fan, mm. a, a major fan of red wine, would there be an issue with me having red wine with my salmon? Like, No, you'd be no, frowned upon. No, scoff at me. Your waiter oh, wouldn't yeah. go. Oh, yeah. Every day, it's personal taste. Yes, right. Real. So if you but like when we're matching know. wine to, to fish... I'd, I'd scoff at you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you would scoff at me. We'd judge you. Totally. Yeah. There we go. Should we have a bit of a taste? Let's see... It's digging. What the deal is? I feel like I'm on one of those cooking programs. I'm gonna get a bit of my foam and a bit of my roe. Oh, that's it. Bring it all roe. together. A bit of my lemon. Look at this. Mm. 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 Oh, wow. That it's fish like is so delicate. An explosion of flavours and textures all at once. It's like a little teensy weensy bomb going off in your mouth. 
It's like fireworks. Mm. It's delicious. I got bad. Mm. And that's what you want with food. You want it to be exciting and wow, and every mouthful you want to grab another one. I think the um, the little crumb of the puffed wild rice really makes it, to mm. be honest. That's what that crunchiness yeah. is, yeah. Mm. yeah it just gives it that nutty sort of texture. So, Matt, mm. tell us a bit about um, a bit about your story, what you are born in Tassie Boy. Born uh, the, in Devonport, northwest coast. Grew up there and um, ventured into the work life from there. You know, you should where, were, where were you working? Um, just at a fast food restaurant, basically. Right. Just cooking chicken day in, day out. Um, <laughs> and those, and didn't those didn't really have a decision, just saving money. I started money. At KFC. So. We can scoff though, but like starting a somewhere like that still gives you basic kitchen skills yeah, that definitely. you're getting without even realising so you're getting it. After there I got um, I got a job up at Cradle Mountain at Lemon Time Lodge. Um, oh, so right. I lived up there That's so right. all I did was work with shifts and mountain bike ride the whole time. And they put you up and stuff. Yeah, so I stayed up there, had a little um, place that I lived in, a little staff accommodation and yeah, it was really enjoyable, you know, lovely place up mm. there, nice mm. food and um, that really was, you know, the, the first job that I got exposed to be able to do restaurant food. Right. And then how did you end up here at Charcoal? Um, well, look, we... After Marilla, did you go Yeah, elsewhere? after Marilla, we went to Melbourne, uh, moved there with my wife. Oh, wow, um, okay. Yeah, so worked a few different places over there. Was that um, different? Was that different yeah, than working places different. here in Hobart? Yep. And, 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 and Devonport? Yep. Um, learnt a lot. Um, you know, the main, the, the main job that... I really enjoyed over there was the boathouse and worked under Gary Megan. Oh wow, yes. the Gary Megan, yeah. the yeah. master chef Yep. Yeah, Gary yeah so ran ran one of his mm. restaurants for him. Um, and it was really, he gave me a great opportunity. Um, got to go overseas, you know, uh, do uh, cooking demonstrations in India, mm. you know, cooking mm. demos in Queensland. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. He's proud of that's amazing. Yeah, cool. but he's just such a mentor, not only about how to run a kitchen, but you know, really had a focus on food mm. and being able to come down and work with all you know the beautiful local ingredients mm. and, you know and everything's on your doorstep and what is your title here at uh, so head chef head chef yeah yeah and that you that, that was the job you came into when you yep. when you got it and yep. does that mean you get to literally pick and choose what the menu looks like are you in charge um, of designing the yeah menu? so i designed the menu but you know it's like i'll create some things but it's an open forum and i like to get all the chefs involved so before we put something on the menu, we taste it, you know, we, we talk about it, mm. you know, before it even goes on there. Because if we just did everything that I thought was good. Yeah, so you're able to take in ideas and, yeah, definitely. and trial yeah. stuff. And, and it's good to, to get the team involved as well. Because, yeah. you know, they've, there's a few different minds working on one dish then. You know, they might have a better idea um, than I have even, mm. you know, for a dish. So... Well, you get them invested as well. Hey? Yeah, I mean that's that, that's yeah, micro managing. Yeah. That's um, it's like an ownership of, of the well, you know, you're you're making them as part of your team yeah. rather than you just becomes, boarding over them, which yeah. is never easy and never good. Yeah, you know? it becomes so. interesting for everybody. You know, they come to work and they're not just oh, I'm going to cook yeah. mass food again. You know, I'm going to yeah you know, right. I'm going to be involved in you know creating a new menu for summer. Well, I treat it as though when when I was an apprentice and I went through all the. 12 hour days, all that kind of stuff, mm. just back to back shifts. I don't want to do that to other people. So yeah, I just right. think, how okay. would I want to manage, how would I want yeah. would have wanted to be managed? So what do I do now? Can I uh, top you up with the Frog Wall Creek reasoning? I will not say no. Yes, I will say most yes. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> You're not working anymore tonight, are you? No, not at all. Perfect. There you go. That went down really well. There you go, there. Yes, yeah, really Enjoy good. That. How was the food? You boys who cooked it, was it good? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it I mean, I loved, it. I, I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. I thought it was terrific. Beautiful dish. I'd just like to say, though, it's been a pleasure working with you. We'll oh. raise our glasses again. Thanks, Paul. Um, you it's have an amazing, nice here. amazing venue here. It's been an experience. It's been a fantastic experience to, to work with this produce. As we know, is the Tasmanian produce is amazing. And we're very lucky. Um, and, yeah, thank you very much for welcoming us into, yeah. your, into your venue. Thanks your for kitchen. coming along. Yeah, it was great, and I've got to say, it's not hard, is it? What you guys do, <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Chuck some no. salmon and some oil. No, it was simple as. Cut yeah. up with all the stuff, all the stuff we'd normally peel at home and chuck in the bin. You guys just chuck back on the plate. Absolutely. And away we go, and you crush everything up in the thermomix, <laughs> sprinkle it on top, 
We're almost saying you're aboard my ship. He's spot on. Thanks. He's to my new career. Thanks, I think. <laughs> we gave yeah. away the secrets. Another bottle of frog, more thanks. We're settling in nicely. <laughs> cheers, fellas. Uh, cheers.